this to us is like one big adventure. They were basically just five ordinary girls. This is so cool and they're so fun. Girl power. You know, they really do believe in it. They live it. They dress it. They are it. This is the best group in the world, I think, man. Yeah. I love them. When Pluto moved into Libra, we saw a change in the way relationships developed. And the Spice Girls epitomise this. They are people that want everything out in the open. And if as many people can join it, then that's excellent. It took the Spice Girls less than a year from the release of their first single to become the world's number one pop band. Victoria, Emma, Jerry and the two Mel's have become a huge phenomenon, taking their chart-topping songs worldwide and thrilling everyone with their sassy attitude. I think they're a bit like, oh, we can do it. Go on, then. Go and kiss Prince Charles. I know if I was a Spice Girl, I'd love to kiss Prince Charles. carte blanche to do whatever they want to do. Well, At the end of the day, I mean, whether you're royalty, whether you're, you know, the bus the driver or the president, everybody is human and everyone's affectionate. Yeah, we treat everyone the same. That's our philosophy. No, no it's, uh, Jerry she's far too posh to kiss the prince. He tried and I said, hang on a minute. We never claim to be perfect. We're not a stereotype, aesthetically beautiful girls. That proves to the girl out there, you don't have to be like, you know, like skinny yeah. model in a magazine to be successful. You know, just make the best of what you've got, basically. Fun with a capital F is another essential part of the Spice success story. There was something special amongst these girls. Just the, their presentation, their excitement, their enthusiasm uh, was just fun. Hopefully we're entertaining because we've got a lot of colour going on, yeah, a lot of madness hair. going on. So hopefully you find us funny, ball. even if you're really laughing at us. But they're more than just a band with some funky songs. They're girls with a plan for life. They believe if you're a woman, you go out there, you work. Don't believe what they told you. If you only got one O level, you can do it. And I love that, and I think that's very, very important. So we are trying to spice up people's lives, because after sort of like the dull, sort of grungy early 90s and recession, you know, we're trying to bring everyone out of that now. You know, times are changing. You've got to, you know, live Be life positive. to the full. People, I think, are sick of the, the image of very, very sweet, innocent girls. They want to see normal girls. They want to see, you know, girls with attitude, feisty girls, you know, and girls with talent as well. No! They're the sort of people that everyone feels like they either know or they can be. They're the sort of people that every, the success that they've had is something that everyone in a way would like to have and they make it look as though it's completely attainable for the person in the street. So the girls do feel that I can, if I work hard, if I sing and I work on my dancing, maybe I could be like this one day and boys just fancy them and think, yeah, this is the sort of girl that I'd really like to go out with. Although success has come quickly, they've worked hard to turn their natural talent and street style into today's top act. Their aptitude, the way they applied themselves to work, which was not very natural as it is for actresses or singers that have done it or, or two dancers, that they took all those elements from the street as well as their own natural talents and, and coupled with that ambition, it really, really shows you that dreams can come true. Neptune is a planet of dreams and Sagittarius is hope, so your hopes and dreams can come true. The Spice Girls have an ability to make their dreams come true and this is one of the things that's quite uh, unique to that generation. There will be one, that generation as a whole will be more successful than many others. It will be the biggest generation since the 60s. <laughs> Being in the Spice family means getting another name too and becoming sporty, posh, ginger, scary or baby Spice. When we heard the names that came out, they were names that were very appropriate from, from very early days. Um, you know, they're, they're, she is scary Spice, <laughs> you know, she is sporty Spice, she is baby Spice. It's caught on so much, everyone is something Spice. 
Mad spice, that's me. Mad spice. Completely mental, yeah. <laughs> Homey spice. A wild spice. <laughs> Shopping spice. Hot spice. The obvious leader of the Spice Girls is, is Jerry. If you look at Jerry's chart, Jerry, well, has, she, she's a Leo. Leo's an actual leader, naturally flamboyant. The inner side, the feminine side, the moon, is in Cancer. The feminine side is, is ruled by Cancer, which rules the breast. So, well, Jerry and breast, you, you don't have to go too much along that subject, but uh, uh, the collections are obvious. Ginger Spice is vamp completely. Her makeup is is vamp all the way. She does the eyes in full, the lips in full. Her sister actually designs her clothes for her. She is rather an eccentric dresser, um, but the the the, uh, the underlying tone is sex, sex, sex. <laughs> Before she hit the big time, Jerry was a game show hostess in Turkey, where she had to demonstrate to the contestants their prizes. Even in those early days, she was a glamour girl and wearing stilettos and sexy outfits. İşte kelebek mobilyadan sallanır televizyon koltuğu. Oturun hem televizyon seyredin hem sallanın. Çok rahat, çok sağlam. She's not very good at backing down, and that's one of the reasons that makes her a winner. She'll she'll push and push and push and she won't take no for an answer. So in one sense, there's a little bit of, it's a little bit of, of the iron fist in the velvet glove. The girls first came together after auditioning for Chris Herbert, who had the idea of getting together a girl band to take on boy bands, like Take That. The Trinity Studios in Surrey was the base for the next few months for rehearsing songs and dance routines. Ian Lee is the manager of Trinity Studios and he worked closely with the girls in their early days. Well, when they first came in and first started singing and dancing, um, they, were, they weren't much above average. Um, some of them were better singers than others. Uh, some of them could dance better. Um, but they weren't what you would call exceptional in terms of their, their performing ability. In the early days there were five girls, Mel B, Mel C, Victoria, Jerry and Michelle. One of the original five was Michelle Stevenson. Uh, and Michelle was, was probably um, the most talented. She had the, the, probably the best trained voice and was quite a good dancer. Um, and people say, why did she leave? Uh, well, basically because she, she wasn't a Spice Girl. Um, she didn't have the attitude. She was the wrong character. And that's nothing against her character, because she was a very nice girl. Uh, but she just didn't fit in. When the management thought that the previous girl wasn't quite right, they asked me if I knew anybody. And I thought, well, I remember Emma. I was teaching Emma at um, a local school in Barnet. As a teacher and also as a singer, you always remember um, pretty girls that sing nicely, that actually have quite a good sound and a good quality and a good tone. I can remember Emma. Um, I went to uh, an opposite stage school. And when we go to opposite stage schools, we go to the same cast and there's a lot of competition. I went to um, Barbara Street Stage School in East Acton. She was at um, Sylvia Young's and we used to always go to the same castings together, three or four castings. So I used to see her and you know I used to talk to her friends and I used to talk to her and I've done a few things, you know, castings with her but we never actually managed to get a job together. And we went to the audition, the management were there and they liked her very much and the next thing I'd heard was that they'd taken Emma on. There was no hesitation, Emma was chosen and obviously was the right choice. And it all bonded very well and then I started training them. I had to say to them, please forgive me, this isn't personal, but we have to do this. We don't have enough time. We've got to get you to understand what it's like to sing in tune. We used to go, ah, that's it. That's all I wanted to do. And sometimes the pitching for Jerry was very hard to pitch this note. And I would have to say to her, sing it again. No, sing it again. 
sing it again, and then maybe going up to singing it again. Uh, for instance, that was hard for her, and yet when I taught her diaphragm breathing, it was fantastic for her. She literally pushed out, breathed in, big open mouth, that was easy. The two Mel's had a very powerful sounds. They had very forceful voices, but um, Mel uh, C had, again, tunings with the other Mel. They had slight tuning problems, and again, both of them at one time, even though I took them singly, got upset. Um, because I kept telling them to, to, to sing the notes. What they did have was a lot of um, determination, a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of um, fire to actually be successful. And it was that that made them good because they realised they had limitations and they worked hard in improving themselves. Jerry in particular worked very, very hard. Because of their determination to succeed, Almost all of their time was taken up by work, leaving little time for anything else. There were no boys. There was certainly never any talk of boyfriends, basically because there weren't time for them. Uh, the girls would work all day, they'd go home, have something to eat, and then they'd sit down and, and work, and then come back to work the next morning. They were that determined to make it succeed. So it didn't take long, only a few weeks, and they started to become very good friends. Uh, they were very supportive of each other. It's like the more they egg each other on, they get this strength between them. And then as five of them together, they have a huge presence. You know, we're doing it for the girls. We want the girlies out there to join our gang. You know, there's obviously there are loads and loads of boys. When we go and do a road show, we're about the only girl band there. You know, Which so, is nice. So I think it's... <laughs> we've got yeah. a man, we've got a man. Oh, I'm sure, I think that's what it is. The girls are chasing, yeah. It's great to see some girls doing it for a change, some balls and attitude. That is the only thing we've got in common with boy bands. Balls. Not big balls. Yeah, and we've had to grow them along the way. There is only one or two chances you kind of get in this industry, and, and to be powerful and have control. And I think they had that in them anyway, and I think that's very much carried them through. After Christmas of 94, um, things really started to take off. There was a lot of interest in the girls. They were doing a lot of uh, recording and songwriting with other people um, and there was a lot of interest in them. And uh, they were starting to agree the final contract um, with Bob and Chris Herbert. Even before we started we signed to our manager, we'd written about 35 songs. We'd already formed the Spice Package and the Spice Movement. And I mean, we've got a lot of control and we didn't want anybody else to make judgment on it or to try and spoil it. I remember talking specifically to Emma and Mel um, and them saying that they were frustrated with the management and they weren't sure about what to do. And I remember speaking to them and saying that this is their time and that they must take power for themselves. One day they were in here and there was a bit of an argument going on between the girls. Nothing unusual. They often used to have disagreements amongst themselves. And then it went quiet and we assumed that they'd gone off down the, the cafe or, or gone home even. And uh, we thought nothing more about it. And it was... Uh, it was either the next day or the day after Chris Herbert came over to us and said the girls have gone uh, that they've walked out now we don't know the reason why uh, there was no massive unrest to our knowledge of why it was why they would have a fallout but um, not many weeks afterwards the, they were signed to Simon Fuller and uh, shortly after that they had the recording contract with Virgin Wannabe was an instant success, and so was the girls' mix of good looks, great songs and attitude. Almost overnight, they became the world's hottest act and collected award after award. Exciting! Exciting. That's exciting! <laughs> okay, so we're going to have a laugh as well. That's what we really... Why do you think oh, you're so yeah. successful? I don't know. I don't think you can say it's because of this or it's because of that. Do you know what I mean? Things happen, and I think this is Spice Girls' little adventure. Not We've taken a lot of people with us. <laughs> Fame has meant there aren't enough real Spice Girls to go around, and the result has been a booming business in lookalikes. The Spiced Girls, the Girls, and Spiced Out are all learning a living performing Spice songs and routines. But only Nice and Spicy have pulled off a stunt as spectacular as their night at the Brit Awards, when everyone thought they were the real thing.
We were escorted all the way through, went through loads of press, everything like that, people screaming and shouting. Then we got through to the dressing rooms and they were like, <laughs> They're already well, in there. They're already in there. So, so how many people did you fool from the limo to the dressing room? All of them. All of them. All right, them. Was proud. A lot Kids, of them. Kids, yeah. horrible. They're banging on our car. Got hands in the windows. It's so it's scary. When they made it, I mean, back in uh, uh, sort of mid '96, um, we thought, "Well, yeah, great. They've made it. No great surprise." Uh, but come late '96, when they they'd had the hits and the album and, and then the Christmas single and everything else. That then became quite phenomenal, and, and that was a surprise. It's quite addictive. We are so positive, do you know what I mean? We do give off a positive vibe, and it is, it is addictive to people. So if, do you know what I mean, they, they, they, more, they look a little more. bit deeper in our lyrics and where we're coming from and realise what's going on, it's like, wow, yeah, they're not just a pop group, they're not just up there looking all kind of bright and cheerful and what mm. have you. Scary Spice is totally outrageous. Um, she's got the stud in her tongue, which is a little bit scary. Lots of push-up bras and leopard everywhere and, you know, lots of frothy hair and really, really sexy. In fact, I think she is the most gorgeous of all the spices. She wears a lot of trousers because she's always kicking up in the air, so I suppose that's very helpful. And she's a bit of a tomboy. Scary Spice. Well, scary she is indeed. Scary Spice has, apart from the Jupiter and Aries that they all have, Scary Spice has Mars and Aries. She's, there's a masculine side to Scary Spice. There's a side of her that is an innate warrior. And if she loses her temper, she loses it big time. She's very used to people trying to play dominant games with her, so she'll normally put the first boot in in order to, uh, to take the dominant level. She, she again can be very, very clannish and very, very protective of the group, but her big strength comes in her wit and her ability to amuse people. The USA is traditionally the hardest place for British acts to make it, but the Spice Girls took America by storm. They became the first ever British act to reach number one with their debut single, and the Spice album topped the album charts, outshining the Beatles. Right now, anything that happens in London, America love. You can be a super fat model, they'll love you. You can create a pop band, you can be Stella McCartney, create a fashion line, whatever you do in London is cool. And actually, they're being compared, believe it or not, to the Beatles. Um, their hit sold more copies than the Beatles. It rushed to number one. It was huge. We came over here with an attitude of, we've got to start from square one. It's going to take a lot of work. Because I think a lot of bands come out here with a bit of an attitude of, you know, oh, we've been successful in Europe, so they don't have to work as hard. And I think we realised that we really had to start from, from scratch, really. This isn't luck. We've worked bloody hard. Well done, girls. Well done. I think exactly. five girls always do things in their own way. You know, whether it means breaking records or history, that's... But we don't set out to do that. That's yeah. part and parcel on what the public choose. The Spice Girls are about more than just music. They write best-selling books too. Oh, yeah. Drop your hands oh, a bit. Drop, drop your hands a bit. Yeah. Down here. Yeah. Basically, it's like a documentary of us life. It's like a scrapbook of you know what what we get up to, what we like, what we do. And basically, it just shows you know how us five individuals operate as people as and it's well. The first official but it's the first official one that we've written with collecting pictures of you know representing the world and it's you know it's real from Yeah, these two melted all the pictures and actually back. Present ourselves as, as as we are. I think if people like that or want to look up to it or see as role models, then that's 
That's excellent, you know. We, we, we, we like to think as a group and individually we give out positive messages and a positive way of living life. And do you ladies believe in girl power? Yes! <laughs> Definitely! And then I was looking on the inside of the book and I was reading about Emma and it said, it said, um, it said that she doesn't want to be a cutie, she wants to be a hot, sexy bitch. That's what it says there. And that really disappointed me because I want to be a cutie and I don't want to be a hot, sexy bitch. <laughs> like, I don't know. I hope Emma will go back to the sweetie that she is. I love her. The Fab Five have a great relationship with the press. Unlike many other pop stars who attack paparazzi and complain of harassment, the Spices always seem to be smiling for the cameras. Smiling Spice Girls means good times for the press too, because Jerry, Victoria, Emma, Mel C and Mel B are today's ultimate cover girls. If you go to any newsstand at the moment here, you look at magazine covers, I think you'll find that the magazines end it aimed at the younger market, at least 50% of them are going to have some sort of Spice Girls, Spice Girl or Girls on the cover. And, um, and they do that purely because they're selling more magazines and it's an image that kids are looking for, they'll see it there, they'll buy it. The media. Yes. The media. Yes, the media. The media. The media. The Young Telegraph is one publication always keen to feature their readers' biggest obsession. We did a photo shoot not so long ago, just um, after their first number one single. And it was really brilliant because I was really nervous, but when they came on the photo shoot, they really played in front of the camera, so it actually made my life really easy. They knew exactly what they wanted, and they were, I mean, they were just really great fun, and they, you know, got on with the photographer, and they did exactly what we said, and they actually did more. I was expecting them to be quite wild and unruly and, um, uh, and very outspoken. And they were outspoken, but they're actually very well behaved. <laughs> they were very polite. Um, they each had very different thoughts and each came from a slightly different direction. And they had, they, they, were, they were very actually really genuine and straightforward, nice people to talk to. So I spent an afternoon chatting to them all. And I, I really enjoyed it. They, they were great fun. They know how to enjoy themselves. They know how to project themselves. Obviously, they have a very good self-image. And uh, I think that comes across very strongly. There was definitely a lead, and that was definitely Mel B. Um, she was in control. She decided she had her makeup on first, therefore she finished first. And she lost a lot of, you know, she couldn't wait for the other girls. And she said, like, well, come on, let's go. We're going to do this, and let's do that. So she was definitely in control and she actually did make a lot of the decisions. I think it really helped my male be going, yes, let's do this, and then it was done. And, and they all sort of followed along and they were quite happy to do it and it worked. We did a front cover and then we had a big response, so much so that the following week we had to do a double page spread poster. Most of the response that we get in Young Telegraph to, young, to um, Spice Girls, it's just they want more, they want, to, they want information all the time, they want to find out what the girls like, what they do, what they get up to in their spare time, what records they're working on, what their plans are for the future, are the, when's the film coming out, who's going to be in the film. It's just, um, there's, there's a general interest really in everything they are and everything they do. My favourite Spice Girl is Bosch Spice. Victoria, I like her because she's sexy and even though she don't smile at her, still, I like her. Dead sexy. I love her. Posh Spice has got the sophisticated look. She wears the designer clothes. She wears um, Hervé Leger, Gucci, Prada. She's, her, her hair and makeup's great. She's very, very simple. She just has a center parting, dark, sophisticated hair. Um, and I think she's, got, she's, she's very slim and she, she looks very classy. Posh Spice. Well, you can see where Posh Spice gets her reputation for self-indulgence. She certainly does have a lovely uh, sense of colour, a lovely sense of, of culture. She needs to enjoy, she enjoys and needs the best things in life, whether it's clothing, whether it's food. I imagine she has to work quite hard not to put on weight because she does like to self-indulge and she does like to spoil herself with the best. With Victoria, um, I remember that she didn't have much power to her voice, so I had to give her a way of a technique 
to, to find a power. And again, in, in, in the lessons, singly, I used to have to keep doing with her, hey, ah, which meant that she had to project. She literally, because she used to go, ah, ah. And I used to say to her that all this power was tucked away in there. And, and I gave her this technique to literally push her voice out. So in the end, all of a sudden, she had much, much more power when she sang. But to get her to sing then again, the same little notes, the same four notes, ah, with doing the hey, that was difficult for her because she would go, hey, ah, and it was a very tiny little voice and it all used to spiral back and go right back inside her. So that she found quite difficult. But in the end, in the end, she did marry the two sounds. So who thought of the name Spice Girls? My theory behind the Spice Girls name uh, isn't a theory, it's a fact. What did happen was, in fact, one day, Tim Hawes, who's a songwriter, who's based here, actually wrote a song which he thought would be quite suitable for the girls, called Sugar and Spice. And um, it's quite a, a punchy, beaty number, uh, and it was very much the girls. And a few days, weeks later, they came back about the name of the, of the band, and um, it came up about the song. And Tim just said, well, you're a spicy bunch of girls, why don't you call yourself Spice? And so from that time, which was probably September, October 94, um, it was a name that was unofficially used. It, they weren't named Spice, but it was a name that, that, that we all referred to them as. It wasn't Spice Girls, just Spice. As a group, the Spice Girls are incredibly confident and that comes across in their dressing. Um, to be able to wear a skirt up to here and a top down to here um, and, and get away with it, I do think you have to be very, very confident and you have to love yourself and really mean what you say. Their style is high street chic. So every 11 to 15 year old can actually afford their clothes. It's not um, an untouchable icon like Madonna. You know, we couldn't afford to go and dress ourselves in Gautier and all the designers that Madonna has. The Spice Girls, we actually could. For instance, Baby Spice, um, her main designer is Miss Selfridge, which is incredibly affordable. The platform seemed to be um, a big part of the spice outfit. Can you see my shoes? I've just got them. They're I've crazy. Got it's just like a trademark that's stuck with them. And every, I mean, you walk down the street and everyone's got their huge platforms on. So it really is a cult almost. Finding time to relax has been hard since the girls hit the top. But even when Wannabe was number one, Mel C trained with her soccer team in Rickmansworth. Her enthusiasm was overwhelming. She just never stopped running all the time. Always wanting the ball all the time, looking for the play, and always wanting to be involved in it. So she was really a natural midfield type person. She seemed to get on with the girls straight away. Seemed to chat to them, and vice versa, the girls seemed to take to her quite, quite away. Um, since then, uh, she's become a bit of an idol in the club. And um, every time the record comes on, all the screaming and shouting goes on and the dancing starts. Uh, so, uh, yeah, she's still very much part of the club. When the younger girls in the younger teams found out about it, they were all following her around for autographs and everything, which she duly done uh, very well. But you could see that she was a little bit embarrassed and about the whole situation, really. Sporty Spice has got over a hundred tracksuits. She's very into Fila, and uh, that's all she wears really. She's got a great body, she works out a lot, um, and she's got a very natural look. She doesn't wear a lot of makeup, she's very athletic. Sporty Spice is a real mixture between the male and the female. She's almost like a female David Bowie. Uh, not quite androgynous, she's definitely got sex appeal, but that sex appeal isn't easy to define. She's, uh, she's very ambitious, much more ambitious than, than the others in, in a lot of ways. She's a person who certainly wants to, uh, to go on achieving throughout life. <laughs>
she may well stay in the industry for a long, long time. She has unusual thoughts. She, she's the most original of the thinkers. She's the one who's going to come out with the quirkiest ideas, the solutions that come out of nowhere. Creatively, she lacks a little bit of confidence. She's a bit hard on herself. So she'd find it hard as a solo uh, artist in the sense that she doesn't have, have the confidence to believe that what she's done is good enough. So she's a natural group member, but in that group, she, she, uh, she's like the quiet chairman. She won't actually raise a lot of voices, but at the end of the day, she'll make the decisive vote or she'll win people around. Love doesn't come easily to this one. She doesn't take relationships lightly. So she could well have many platonic relationships where she enjoys the friendship of people, but without actually getting too close. She's not easy to get to know at all. Um, she's always hiding a bit of herself or keeping a bit of herself in reserve. And, and the best comes out in the public. In one sense, she's a better party animal. And when the lights go out, so does she. Mousy. She's cool. Emma. She's the cutest. The Spice Girls have achieved many fantastic things, but none more sensational than bringing road accident victim Robert Skeets back from the brink of death. There was a van coming up Burlington Road, and Robert didn't see the van and went straight into it. The blood was pouring out and the neighbour took him to the hospital and then they put him on the life support machine for five days. He had to have brain surgery, there was a load of fragments of bone in the brain and I didn't think there was any hope for him. I gave up hope on the Tuesday when the doctors come out and said it was going to go either way with him and then we started playing Spice Girls and he seemed to be moving his limbs. So we knew he wasn't brain dead or paralysed, so we knew he was going to come out of it somehow. What do you remember? The music? Yeah. What was it like? Come on. Pretty good. My favourite Spice Girl is Baby Spice. My favourite Spice Girl is Emma. Um, I like the way she dresses. Um, she's just cute because she's the baby of the bunch, you know. You know, I dress similar to her, I mean, I like wearing baby doll dresses like her and that. It's just really nice. That's with Jerry, Baby Spice has got a genius quality to her. There's an eccentricity to her that's quite remarkable. She has got a Marilyn Monroe quality to her. You know, in a, in a sense, life itself is, is one long sexual adventure. There's a buzz to the whole of life if you know where to find it and Baby Spice generally knows where to find it. She's very, very ambitious as well, and very, very, uh, very, very keen to keep her youthfulness. So she could well go on being a Baby Spice for a long, long time. Baby Spice, to me, is like the most wonderful Samantha Fox I've ever seen. She's small, she's curvy, she's sexy, she's blonde, she's, she's puffy. Um, every single boy I know absolutely fancies Baby Spice rotten. Emma? Because she's got nice blonde hair. Nice, very nice indeed. I had a dream last night about, obviously, tonight's show. Um, the Spices were on, they sing, Who Do You Think You Are? And myself and friend were in the aisle dancing. Then they spotted us, stopped the music, caught us down, they were both in the middle, dancing with them. They got backstage passes with them later on, had the party with them. So, <laughs> we're going to see if they've got any tickets for tonight, see if we can dream can come true. But Spice fans are not all boys. Mel B. Because she's talking me, she's, she's mad. And she reminds me of myself. I would say about 85% of our fan base is 75. actually girls. Yeah. You know, but what we always said that... We like know, boys, though. Yeah, yeah boys. we like boys. What we always said, though, is we wanted to break rules that, you know, we wanted our audience to be really wide, you know, appeal to everybody. And I think... <laughs> yeah, really like, wide, really, like really that. Really <laughs> wide. And I think that's what it's done. It's a, you know, it doesn't alienate anybody. Whether you're black, white, you're president, postman, it doesn't matter. You know, you can all n nod your head to the same good groove. I don't really think that there's been anything like it since the 60s and the Beatles. I mean, we've had things like the Bay City Rollers came along in the 70s, everyone loved. We had the Osmonds and the Partridge family and David Cassidy, and then we had the whole glam rock thing. And throughout um, the 80s, we've had various different bands that have, that have made their mark. But I don't think that there's ever been a band that has actually appealed to the masses in the same way that the Spice Girls has. 
and I think it's um, it's unique really since, since the Beatles. I think the Beatles did do it, and they did it in, it, with great style, but no one has done it to such an extent since then. Following in the footsteps of 60s stars, the Beatles, the Spice Girls upstaged the movie stars at the Cannes Film Festival in the south of France when they announced they were to make a movie about themselves. It's going to be very kind of intense, but with a fun element, because that's what we do day in, day out. Yeah, and it's going to properly show the world, well, damn, what, what we're like. It's going to be fun, you know, it love, is. adventure, loads of everything. Sauciness. It is a parody of ourselves. We are a celebration of London, the 90s. You also see what the Spice Girls are really like, what we really say and really, do really on say. many different levels. You know, you'll see our inner and outer struggles, the dedication to our fans. I like everything they do. They appeal to so many different sections of society. We found that we, you know, young kids love the Spice Girls and then their parents actually still like the records because they can sing along to them and they can relate to them. You find the grannies are actually listening to the records and the grandparents and, even, and you know, they like them too. They think it's great. So they've kind of permeated every single sector of society and with so much success, you know, they are, that everyone knows who they are. Everyone can, everyone can name them, even, even you find grandparents. Are, um, can actually go through and name every single Spice Girl and what each one likes and her own characteristics. So I think it's just, it's part of the whole Spice explosion really. People want to see, um, you know, real people out on the stage and I think that's probably the secret to their success because they are, you know, normal girls. You know, they're everyday girls that you see walking down the high street and they've made it big. They can now sit back and enjoy life and they can do what they want to do, not necessarily what they need to do. Um, and that's, that's a nice position to be in. This is the start of a journey that's going to go on for ages. short time these five girls have taken the world by storm. Records, books and the movies have all been spiced and the question that everyone wants the answer to is, is there anything they can't succeed at? The way things are going it looks like the Spice Girls will be the hottest thing around for a long time to come.